So this year we are promoting our collision prevention system that does uh, um, immersed level 7, 8 and 9 and uh, we are really excited to be part of this year's electro mining. A collision prevention technology is critical towards uh, for sustainability of any mine um, because mining is a very dangerous uh, uh, industry and uh, activity and so our technology comes in to mitigate the, the risk, the likelihood of a uh, collision on site that involves uh, machinery and uh, people. So our technology ensures that you have um, as long a period as possible without fatalities, without downtime, because once there's a, a, an accident or an incident or a fatality, then you know it, there's, there's downtime that can be incurred as a result and uh, you're not as uh, productive as you could be. So that's how we, we, we try and enhance uh, sustainability of uh, our clients. We are about uh, four years in this uh, industry. So we came in just uh, as the um, regulation 810 came into effect, which it basically regulates the industry to say that each mine has to basically have such a technology that will mitigate the risk of a collision and will actually slow down or stop a machinery in order to prevent a, a collision. So when that was promulgated into law uh, around uh, 2020, we then um, uh, 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 had been working on um, other technologies that are similar, but then uh, we had a very keen interest from the market players in, in, in mining, in CPS systems, that uh, can we then develop a solution that would use a um, camera uh, to detect objects, classify them, and then uh, prevent collisions or, or stop a machine uh, to, to, to prevent collisions. So that's what you know, drove the innovation. And uh, of course, there were already some players in the market that were using different technologies. And um, so we, we came with a novel approach of using AI cameras that are able to you know, um, classify objects, whether it's a machine, whether it's a pedestrian. And not only did we do that, we realized that um, the reliance on only one, so any, 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 any technology really has its uh, shortcomings, right? Um, so we decided to do what we call a sensor fusion. So our approach is to use camera and radar to enhance uh, um, safety because, you know, camera has its own shortcomings, radar has its short, own shortcomings, but together in a sensor fusion approach, the, 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 the result of um, you know such a such a product or such a combination is really uh, uh, increased performance and uh, better uh, performance and uh, fail to save measures as a result uh, are much more robust. So obviously it's been uh, promulgated into law to have such a technology on um, all operations on all machine on all machinery and. To then, um, obviously, then they, they are the technical aspects as to, you know, how do you live with this technology on a day-to-day -day basis, and um, I know, for instance, the the um, the the guidelines and blueprints that were uh, drafted by the uh, Minerals Council, and those blueprints really are very thorough in 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 a way that they document and uh, prescribe how data logging should be done, uh, distances at which objects should be able to be detected, um, you know, just how to really live and, 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 and how, how to, to not only live with the solution, but uh, develop it in such a way that should anything happen, we, we, we can uh, try and recreate the scene, we can try and go back and see the, what the data logs look like and try to find out where did the fault lie. Not only that, but um, the, the, the technology itself is, is, is regulated by, by means of um, ensuring, so, so there's a standard, an ISO standard, ISO 218152, uh, which, which specifies how exactly uh, technology such as ours should interact with a machine 
which obviously is made by your OEMs, your Bell, your Caterpillar, Comatio, and so on. So how does so 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 that uh, ISO standard really regulates how we com how the two uh, systems or the machine and the CPS system uh, interacts with the machine without uh, undermining uh, or avoiding any. Um, uh, 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 warranties uh, or undermining the engineering of the, the, the machine. So that has really helped because it then uh, sets the rule for, for how to play and uh, everyone can just follow those guidelines and uh, it, it, it really becomes universal, it becomes standard and uh, that's where I think uh, regulation has then come to help both suppliers su such as we are as well as the OEM that make the machines as well as the mine who are the end users and uh, I think that the, 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 the work that South Africa has done in that regard is really commendable um, because I think it's only South Africa that has made it mandatory that uh, a mine should have such a technology that the technology must slow down or stop the machine uh, you know, in, 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 in cases of a critical uh, scenario or risky interaction. What, what we, uh, we can only speak for ourselves, what we are experiencing is a couple of the s smaller operations that previously did not uh, obviously maybe see the need because they felt that their exposure or their risk was um, you know, very minimal because of maybe their fleet size, they don't have as many machines on site, they don't have, or maybe they have a thorough traffic management plan where they feel that pedestrians and uh, machinery don't interact, uh, you know, in a way that would be unsafe. So a, a whole lot of those uh, sort of operations were not, uh, uh, um, did not have such systems in place. And since the, 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 the regulation has been uh, enacted, um, we've seen a significant uptick because now suddenly even some of these uh, type of uh, uh, operations have to uh, take up the, the, the technology. And um, what is quite interesting is uh, quite a number of them, um, uh, small operations if you will, thought that you know if they just submit a uh, thorough traffic management plan um, that they would get exemption from the, um, you know, uh, inspectors but uh, it turns out not to be the case in some in some provinces or regions the, the the inspectors are really enforcing they are closing some mines unfortunately so i think it's really important that um, um, you know yes the opportunity is there and uh, it, what what we've tried to do is to be sustainable for the client even in our pricing even in the way we package our solution that um, we understand it may be a grudge purchase but we really have to try and make it uh, worthwhile for our end users and really try and deliver value uh, and, 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 and have the end user see that return on investment in the shortest uh, period uh, possible. So right now we are at um, level 9 so, so that's the, 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 the buzz and level 9 means that um, in a risky or unsafe interaction um, if the operator is not the, the driver that is is not taking heed to the warnings that they you know the, the, the system would have warned them off that you know this is an unsafe interaction um, le in current level nine will slow down or stop that machine there are talks of you know in the future of a level 10 but I think um, really the future is probably automation where more activities are, are you know, are automated on any, generally, I think that's the, the, the future of mining. They say, why send a person to do uh, what a machine should be able to do? So we'll be, doing, we'll be sending out machines to do more and more of the work. So I, I really do see CPS evolving to now include automation. I think we will see yeah, quite quite significant uh, shift in that regard. There are some mines locally and abroad that have started to have uh, certain activities uh, automated. Um, I know there are some mines where during your your shift uh, change, um, you know that during that period um, the activities are automated just you know so that they optimize on the productivity, and um, so that's one case where we see. The, the at least the introduction of automation and then um, but in general I do think that automation will be 
uh, and the full automation, full autonomous machines will be uh, the way to go uh, as far as the future of uh, CPS technology. Data helps in, 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 in many aspects, you know, for safety, for um, operational efficiency, and, um, and, and, you know, obviously sustainability, you know. So, uh, for instance, we have a solution where you know, our CPS has a, uh, not only a data logging platform, but a, a telematics platform that will, you know, basically uh, show you where your machine has been, what it was doing, you know, and what were, what were the, 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 the engine's performance, you know, things like your fuel, your oil, your temperatures, the, the condition of your uh, braking system, the condition of your tires. And so all of this data helps minds to plan uh, their operations for efficiency and uh, for, for sustainability, such that you know, they know um, what, what, what routes the, the, uh, would be optimal and um, yeah, I, I really do think that data helps in that regard. And in the safety aspect, obviously, um, with, with, with more and more data, you are able to then um, see and, and, and almost visualize where are your um, critical or unsafe uh, interactions. And then you can have measures to mitigate that, uh, those interactions or the, the, the safety in, in, in those uh, kind of interactions or scenarios. So I think that's where data comes in. And um, it, it's really a powerful tool. And uh, you know, uh, we, should, we should be able to, to uh, supply our end users and the minds with as much data as possible for them to make informed decisions. And I think that's, uh, that's another thing that sets us apart uh, from our competitors in the sense that you know, we, we, we offer not just a CPS solution for you know, safety, but we give you data in the form of our telematics platform that will um, you know, uh, uh, basically help you to uh, improve your bottom line. So like I said, we do a sensor fusion approach where we rely on more than just one technology. So you'd have some of our competitors that use you know, GPS technology or that use um, RAF technology or even camera technology alone. But ours is to say that, look, we're going to use this in a sensor fusion approach where it's more than one sensor or more than one sensor type. And um, that means that even the fail to save, should anything go wrong, the fail to save mechanism is built that should one technology fail, the other one will continue running. Um, so that's, that's, that's the one thing. And as far as the value that we, 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 we give to our clients, like I said, we have a, um, what we call virtual operations, which is a telematics platform. Because we're already tapping into, especially for level nine, we're already tapping to, into your canvas, into the ECU of the machine. Um, obviously, the primary reason for that is to be able to communicate with the machine, to slow it down or to stop it. But a, a, a secondary benefit is that we can um, harvest or take all the data that we become privy to because now they are connected into the ECU via Canvas and you are able to uh, uh, use that data in a way that uh, benefits the client. We spoke about um, sustainability, operational efficiency, helping to improve the bottom line. And we really are, are keen on, uh, you know, Get driving value, seeing that return on investment in the shortest uh, period possible, and uh, I think that's really what sets us apart.